establishing a repeater, how to operate it and how to maintain it for the best functionality possible. Yes, holding it is big. That should be okay. See, all of you know some of the bigness must be there. And here I have a question. Anyone are using Motorola GM 300 as a pair as a repeater? They are using 338. Not 300. No, 338 is your uh, walkie talkie. GM 338. No, GM 338. GM 338. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, YZ. YZ. Yeah. GM 338. Two of both of them are yeah, the same. Yeah, both of them. Okay, anyway. It's okay. <coughs> See, as we all know, repeater means repeating uh, something. Here, we are repeating the audio. Why we are repeating the audio? Because this is all high rise in buildings are being taken, then you are standing somewhere here with a walkie talkie. Okay, your signal will not transmit, this will not travel, clearing all the obstructions, and somebody will be standing somewhere here and then with another walkie talkie. This is the communication range. Suppose if it's an open area, you will have some 6 to 7 kilometers communication range with these walkie talkies normally. Suppose you go to the seashores, you will have uh, much longer distances also. Because uh, there are no obstructions, but here you have an obstruction. Maybe city area or rural area, you have this some obstructions for the radio waves to travel. So for this thing, what we are doing, suppose the same person is standing here on top of this building. Yes, he can communicate for a longer distance. That is also a known fact only. Anyone have any doubt on this thing? Okay, so that is why, and it is not possible for both the people to stand there. What we are doing, we are installing a device <coughs> called repeater at a highly elevated location. Suppose this building is there, this is a multi-storied apartment building is there. Suppose you put your repeater here. This person is standing here and this person is standing here. Now, signal travels from here to here, it is possible now. Suppose it is not there, the communication cannot come. That is why this is called a repeater. What it is doing, taking your signal speech and repeating again so that the other person can hear them. So this frequency going, the signal going in this direction is F1. And this repeater equipment converts the thing to F2 and sends it again. Pre-transmit again, nothing is there. Then the other person is holding a walkie-talkie in his hand. He is having both F1 and F2. And this person also the same thing, F1 and F2. But his walkie-talkie goes to F1 when he presses the PTT. And the release the PTT it comes back to F2. So this person is already in release in RX mode. So he is on F2. Whatever signal is going up in F1 is converted and getting come to the other side in F2. So this person will be able to listen what you are speaking. So vice versa. That is why you are increasing the range. Suppose the same thing is somewhere here on a hillock. You see, this range is limited to this place. The communication between these two is not possible at all. That is number one. If you instead repeat on a building, it will go to some place, some some better uh, nowadays area. Suppose you are something like this. The best example is Vijayawada, Kodadala Hill, where you can see even with a telescope, I think you can see not not less than 100 kilometers from there very easy. So naturally, radio signals travel that, that length also, that, that much distance also, because there are no obstructions and other things. So now, what? This is the walkie talkie. How the repeater is configured, I am telling you. This is transmitting in F2. When you press the PTT, there is one more here F1. PTT released. It is an RX mode. This is TS. <coughs> this is an RX mode. So, going to this receiver. Because it has to be received by a receiver there. What you are transmitting, it will be received by a receiver. You all know that audio comes out from a loudspeaker. Okay, here what we are doing, this audio is fed back to the microphone. This is mic input. Where otherwise what you do, you, you hold a microphone, you speak here and the transmitter comes to the receiver. So here, what it is, what you are doing, this audio is coming out of the speaker, is fed into the transmitter, input mic, that's microphone input, this is transmitting. This is going out. This is receiving. 
inside whatever you are transmitting F2 if you transmit this receives on F2 <coughs> and the Px is on F1 only the audio is given back so the F1 audio again this gets into transmission and this fellow can hear that that is the one thing that is what a repeater action actually but here one thing when this will open into transmit when there is an audio when there is an audio then only this will transmit otherwise continuous transmission is not possible this thing that is a load to the transmitter and it is difficult to handle it that is why whenever there is a signal then it goes into transmit mode when that signal drops that stops so then this person makes the PTT again the same action will come this, this will receive this transmits and this transmission will come to this one that is what the repeater action Here now from this action, we are getting these questions. When the transmitter will on and how it will get on when there is a signal inside that is? This goes into the PTT, transmit and this is a receiver. Okay, when this receives a signal, how this knows to go into transmit? Okay, we have connected the audio. Its job is only Whatever the audio is coming, it will transmit out. But provided the PTT is pressed, who will press the PTT? This receiver only will press the PTT also there. That is called a carrier operated relay. The audio, a sample, small sample is taken, made into DC voltage, like our regular what you are AC, you are giving the 6 volts or 12 volts, and then AC is converted to DC and filtered, etc. etc. Pure DC is coming out in our power supply. Sir. Similarly, the same thing is coming made with here. This is made to operate a small relay or some sort of a thing. Relay contacts will be there, you know. This is the PT. When there is an audio, this switches on the relay. Relay will switch on the, uh, close the contacts. Now here this will come uh, to this place and this will come to this place. So this PTT is closed to this switch. When the PTT is pressed and audio is coming, what else is there for the transmitter? It simply transmits. And you hear it the other way. This is what happens there. But eh, how homemade, so many homemade repeaters are coming and then people are operating it. Many clubs are getting calls for these things uh, regularly. What system you are following, you will really notice and already those who are operating the repeaters and maintaining the repeaters also will understand why I am asking this question. Suppose the signal level is above the squinch, then this audio will come, it is okay. But if it is below the squinch, what, why are we opening the sketch of a VHF FM receiver? Why are we opening the switch of a FM receiver? To get weak signals. To get weak signals. Yes. Okay. Suppose you keep the audio open. You keep the switch open. That audio is enough for this thing to trigger the transmitter. Is this the solution? No. The audio is the solution? No. If this is the solution, you will have to lose the weak signals. Am I right or not? Certainly any signals above the squinch you will have to lose them. Sorry, below the squinch you have to lose them. So your range of operation will be because this is the range of operation of your re repeater. So many signals will come from there, this circle, this or all, this area is below squinch. Below squinch level. <coughs> and you are in, within the town of Vijayawada town or any town or your local area, you are happy in communication because this receiver is capable of opening this switch or your transmissions are capable of opening this switch of this receiver it gets retransmitted, it's comfortable but suppose these people say 70 kilometers, 80 kilometers, 100 kilometers away with walkie talkies on top the repeater is such a nice location which I am 35 kilometers away and a crow flies distance from this video the repeater I am able to trigger with the walkie talkies that's okay people beyond that thing beyond that range so this, these signals are lost they say I have a, what an inefficient repeater is it an inefficient repeater or not? If it cannot open the squinch signal, so below the signal is below the squinch, it is definitely an insufficient, inefficient repeater. So here, that is why audio conversion switching is not the correct technique there. Audio conversion technique is not the correct technique. It is acceptable technique. What to do? People, somebody say, we have no other alternative, sir. we have done that thing. But acceptable switching is carrier operated relay, when there is a carrier, only when there is a carrier, not audio, FM carrier is there, any FM limiter or detector will have a, and a limiter current variation will be there. 
little uh, current variation will be there. Sensing the current variation, you have to arrange a small switch sort of thing, a bipolar transition or anything, or a Darlington pair. A small, very little current variation there. That current variation can be given to this thing for further amplification and give another uh, Darlington pair sort of thing for the amplification there. This you give to relay. What will happen with the slightest variation of the limit? When it will happen? Only when there is a carrier. Need not be a strong carrier. Very a weak carrier is also sufficient. Much, much, much below the switch level. Lowest signal. Suppose the audio, if you can hear who is the other person talking to you, may be barely readable also. At that condition also, the switch carrier opens and then triggers the transmitter. That means then you don't lose any signal at all. When the farthest signal possible also, you'll go through the repeater. Happily, it will go through the repeater. Only one thing is the audio quality should be better. Because some of the weakest signals possible, sometimes you also, your own uh, very good uh, ears mated with a uh, pair of uh, headphones or anything also won't be able to make out who is uh, calling you. you. You will understand because your own calls say, is a U3 MGT, U3 MGT or U3 MGT or something. Eh? And this is okay, but what about other calls? That is more important for you. Otherwise, you will become a deaf man, you can't understand who is calling you. He is calling you, that is confirmed, but who is that gentleman calling you? So here, that's why. That level, you should have the audio level, clean audio level at least. Eh? But signals, down to the sequence is zero level also that will be retransmit there. Okay, let us not be happy, yes it is transmitting and all. There are so many things, always ready to fight or I mean, attack and you, and you will be losing the signal again whatever you received there. There are all possibilities I tell you now. So there are installation of a repeater and maintaining of a repeater. Maintaining of a repeater is the second thing. But the installation of a repeater successful is no joke simply, no joke. Because you will understand why I am telling you that. But it is simple thing also. You provide it, you know the concept. If you don't know the concept, it is simply no joke. I will tell you hundreds of reasons are there for you to lose the signal. See, this is, forget about the transmitter for some time, sir. You are on hill top and having a receiver with a good antenna on that. You will be the happiest man in the world because you will be far nook and corners also will be receiving signals here. And you will be listening to the receiver, it is okay. But and you will transmit when, when this reception stopped, then only you transmit in the PTT. But here in this case, what is happening, your TX also taking place simultaneously. This is not separate, this is not separate. Both of them are working at the same time. Whatever the signals, biggest signals are coming into your antenna and whatever signal induced into the antenna will be further less. And then the coaxial cable, further gone. And then it is coming to the receiver front end, etc, etc, further gone. You get at least some point one two microvolts signal. Or sometimes even less than that point one microvolts also you get that. That should be able to get, get retransmitted with a good audio will be. That is the greatness of the repeater. Is it really possible? Did you ever check all these things? What is a 0 0.1 microvolt signal? Or 0.11 or something, something similar to say minus 128 dBm signal. Can you ever hear the signal? You have to tear your ears to understand who is the gentleman calling you on the other side. Such signal also can be repeated through, but what is the use? It has to reach again the other walkie talkie, the same quality audio will be am I right or not? If it doesn't reach, there is no meaning going up the hill every Sunday, paining your legs and all, and then making an investment, making fighting and all. You are correct, I am not right, I am correct, you are not right, etc. etc. This is necessary for this thing, except to relax back and enjoy on a Sunday. See, if I that's why here RX and TX also simultaneously taking place. Once the TX is on, the signal will start radiating from this antenna. This is enough to attack on this thing and kill the weak signal coming. If you understand, or if you must have been having an experience, see this is a repeater, this is your RX radio, this is your TX radio, audio is interconnected, everything is okay. This is the PTT COR. And you have this antenna, and you have this antenna. Okay. You just listen to the receiver, it is wonderful. The moment you switch on the COR and the PX is all gone. This is gone. You won't hear the signal where it is there. It is there. But the overpowering of a transmitting antenna signal on the receiver, it is closing the uh, weak signals. It is bucking the uh, simple, uh, the, the, 
weak signals coming from the RS or long distance walkie talkie or a person who is operating from the ground level. So this should not happen there. That is called isolation, TXRX isolation. That isolation should be there as per the theory it is there, it should be minus A, B, B, B. What we are achieving only minus 30 or minus 25 and saying we are having a repeater. I laugh at everyone, now what about this one? So, main thing is arranging RX, arranging TX, a power supply for that. Arranging one antenna, two antenna and making a COR, nothing, it's a joke only. Simply you can do that thing. It is one hour or half a day project of a Sunday. But what about this thing? This is the most important section where you want to operate your repeater effectively. With an effective communication, you should have the repeater. Otherwise, it's an ornamental purpose only. I do have a repeater there. It is an ornamental purpose repeater. So that is where the radiation coming the transmitter. When it is receiving weak signals. I am always saying when it is receiving weak signals. Because our weak signals are more important for you. Strong signals, nothing. It, it will go through anyway. The weak signals, reception should not be hampered because of the transmitting signals simultaneously at the same time. There are so many factors, hundreds of it. It will take till you need for me to explain the complete repeater setup. It is not one simple subject. Suppose you are having this is the white coverage area. You are at the you are having a hill like that, some high-rise building at this center of the your, uh, operated, uh, operating area. Then your signal will go in all directions. But in Vishakapatnam, Vishakapatnam, your case, yeah. that uh, Simachalam. Hills, Simachalam. 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 not Simachal, Kalash Giri. It is on the coast, and you have a repeater here. Okay. So, but this is also having a omnidirectional pattern. We call this as an omnidirectional pattern. Signal goes in all directions. How much of the signal is getting wasted here on the sea? This is a bad background. This is also an important factor to be noted there. So that is one. At the same time, the first thing is we are transmitting antenna signal. The radiation should not hamper the weak signals of the receiver. That is more important. How to do it? That is why we keep cavity resonators. Okay, cavity resonators are difficult to achieve, <coughs> difficult to make also. Where on hand bands, because what is the separation between uh, TX and RX in hand bands? 600. 600. Because we have only two, two mega cycles bandwidth in uh, 144 to 146. And this has become some customer tradition that we, for a long period WPC has been. I have been suggesting everyone now, even Lark also has suggested that we will ask WPC, don't give uh, in a stereotypic manner uh, 600 kilohertz shift. Now, recently WPC has given us at 144 to 148. 144 to 146, not 146. Uh, at the edge of 146, you have a lot of satellite activity. But now, they are giving the permission from this uh, base mobile operation center up to 148 also. So, why can't we ask a WPC to give us uh, 600 kilohertz shift may 1.2 or more or more? The reason. Commercial repeaters, we have installed not less than 150 repeaters anywhere for police or cement industries or security collieries or railways or various, various, various applications. Everywhere the main question is the TXRX isolation. There they have a separation of 5 to 5.5 megahertz separation. 5 to 5.5 megahertz separation because that radiation disturbance coming from this RX and TX antenna to the RX antenna is minute. There, put two radios put some dirty CUR connection or anything, <coughs> the moment you start operating, it's over, it's it all clear. It is ready. And people, police people operate the radio, they repeat it in this way only. It is very simple for them, take two GM300 radios and some GM300. Why GM300? There is a port on the back side, audio out, audio in, DC voltage, the roads DC, and your CUR pin. Everything is in this, readily available like a ready-made food for you GM300 or GM338 etc etc. But Kenwood radios are over there, they are inside and you have to have a special cable for that and this is also nonsense. But GM300 Motorola is not like that. You can even solder the wires to the pin, the 16 pin connector on the back panel. Who are operating with GM300 or GM338, they will everyone know that there is a small connector on the outside. It has everything, your microphone audio input, your speaker, speaker name, detector audio output. Again, all of them are the 600 ohms impedance, comfortably set for you. 
That's why GM 300 repeater is very very easy for you to make for anyone to that matter because everything is ready. Everyone do this. Take two radios. Keep one or other. So on the back side you have this connector. If you have this connector, you make a cable. Gone. And you have to program it accordingly. What the CVR is on or CVR is off. When the carrier is on, CVR will go off. Or you can make it vice versa. It's all in the program only. CVR logic high or logic low. If you make it, that will. Once there is a signal, this is an RX radio, this is a DX radio, once there is a signal coming in, this will automatically switch on, that's all, you don't have to do anything at all. Your transmitter is on at the next moment. And that to have the biggest signals possible. Once it sends there, it says the slightest carrier, it switches on the transmitter. So whatever comes, it goes away. Because of the 5.5 MHz separation, they never fail to feel any problem. But the main problem is coming to a radio lectures only because of the 600 kilohertz shift. See, whatever the signal radiating at the same time simultaneously from the transmitter is attacking on the receiver with a difference of 600 kHz. That means our filter should be capable of kicking away the 600 kHz signal which is apart from the its, its own operating frequency. So you need for that thing. But is it really needed? Yes, it is needed for the best performance possible. But it is a costly affair. So many local clubs, their hobbies, can't spend money. It is a copper plated chambers coated with silver. It is, it is one or two lakhs of rupees uh, uh, equipment. Or if you go for the one and a half inch diameter uh, pipes, silver uh, coated pipes and all, that is also having a, it's a certainly a costly affair. But there are other ways at least you cannot, if you cannot achieve 80 dB, there are possibilities at least to achieve 50 dB, 60 dB also at 600 kilohertz. I have done that thing. I will make it clear picture you will understand. Now our main problem is only the isolation between TX and RX. Do you have any, any problem about uh, audio transformation, CVR, etc, etc? That's the known subject only. Whatever is the valuable signal received by the weak signals received from far distance uh, stations by the receiver is getting spoiled by the transmitting signal at the same time simultaneously transmitting. That is what our concern now. Nothing else is there. Here, of course, coverage of uh, the repeater coverage, their antennas, and then etc. That's a different subject. But first thing is, these strong signals of the transmitter should not hamper the receiver. Number one, how to achieve this thing is reduce the TX power. Mind you are standing at hilltop or some high location. People are getting crazy and seeing they are increasing the power to 25 watts. Is it really needed? Suppose this is operating at 5 watts and you are increasing it to 25 watts. What is the gain there? 5, 6 dB or 7 dB, minimum 7 to 8, 7, 7 7.5 dB, you are increasing. That means that much of signal you are losing in this. You made the power from 5 watts to 25 watts. What is the signal attacking back on the receiving antenna? Have you ever thought of this one? Yeah, but tell it correct or not? Yes. Since signal you power you increase more, the signal, unwanted signal kicking back onto the receiving antenna is becoming more. 5 watts to 25 watts. Oh, okay, at least 10 watts you have done. Means difference of 3 dB. So that 3 dB, at least 1.5 dB kicked back onto this receiving antenna. You are losing that 1.5 dB signal. Whoever are the weak signal, suppose this is the area, and this is the area, and this is the area. At least by doing the thing, you practically learn it. You do it and see this circle, third circle people who are uh, in the longer distances, they are lost, immediately lost. Then that itself you will understand. They are lost, you are losing the signal. The fellow goes off from the air saying, uh, I am not accessible to the repeater. Certainly not, he is also accessible <coughs> to the repeater. But you are killing the signal by your hands by increasing the TX power. Don't do that thing. Similarly, same thing in the receiving, in the, uh, improving the receiving performance also. Suppose you have added a preamplifier here, not needed a preamplifier. Same, this is a 0 dB antenna. This also is 0 dB antenna. Okay, now you made this thing to a 3 dB antenna. What will happen? Suppose this is your station. Earlier you were having a 0 dB antenna. And now you made it a 5 by 8 lambda 3 dB antenna. Your signal will be heard everywhere, you will get more better reports and all. That's a common thing only. 
But did you try to do the same thing to the repeater? There are people, I know that thing. They are nodding, not nodding their heads. Here also it happened. I had to shout at midnight when we installed the repeater the first time. They did not did me. I donated this repeater to VTLHR. They were very happy to take the repeater. But once the repeater installation has come, they threw me out saying, this old man, get out. We know what to do. Then with night night they installed, they removed this 0 dB antennas and 3 dB antennas have come into the place. Next day morning everyone started saying, you are not even from the uh, new hands coming uh, into the city, uh, trying to contact from uh, Sikindrabad station. They are saying we are not able to contact because it's gone. Because they increase the power here, uh, gain here and increase the gain here also there. That is 3, 3 plus 3, 6 dB. More attacking on this uh, receiver, losing all the weak signals. That's not the thing. Increasing the power is also a problem. Increasing the gain of the antenna is also a problem. Whatever the weakest signal coming onto the receiver, how to secure it carefully? That is the most important point. Then. If that is not done, there is no meaning for the repeater. You are losing all the advantages standing there on the higher elevation uh, building or location, they are putting a repeater set up and everything. Then your purpose is not served. So don't try to increase the power. Or don't, if you can increase the antenna's gain and all, okay. But that should be done very, very, very carefully, extremely carefully. I will tell you why also. Have you ever gone through a book called FM and Repeaters by W7ZOI uh, uh, on your hands? That is a known subject only. Here is an antenna. Here is an antenna, side by side, see, much difference, because we cannot afford the filter. Basically, you have your receiver and you arrange some, at least what I am saying, some filter very well tuned, very well tuned, it cannot kick out all 600 kilohertz completely. The difference of the 600 kilohertz coming from the, uh, missing interference coming from the DX antenna, at least, at least it will kick something, some filter there. Once the filter is there, you will be having loss. That's a known factor only. You cannot say no to that thing. Naturally. But in spite of the loss, there will be some gain again inside and it can make out the signal. Still it can make out the signal. Suppose it is coming as a 0.1 microvert signal. It might go up to a 0.15 or 0.17. And you know this thing is lost. Okay. But the danger of signal coming from the transmitting signal attacking on the receiving antenna is much reduced. So you should be very careful in selecting the filter. Without filter at 600 kilohertz is a problem. Let us hope that uh, we give a plea to the uh, Ministry of Communication saying, sir, please don't give uh, frequencies at 600 kilohertz shift. Please give more, maybe 1.2 uh, megahertz or something, maybe double. Or something like that. Let's hope for that. Because earlier the radios are made for only one or two crystal channels. After that, the synthesizers have come. They have with the 5 kilohertz steps and 20 kilohertz, uh, 25 kilohertz steps and all. And then some of them are with 50 kilohertz, the old radios are 50 kilohertz separation only. They are not able to make it below than that. Now the radios are, Pafang radios have come at, Pafang, even the S1 and other radios also come with 6.25 kilohertz separation to 6.25 kilohertz channels. <coughs> so what is happening in this channel number one, eh? channel number two is 6.25 kilohertz separation. So we cannot hear each other. But the interference will come. Something will be there, some wee noise or something will be there. That noise is sufficient to spoil the weak signal coming inside. You just take two handies, you keep some uh, same frequencies, some uh, 100 kilohertz separation and also, or some 50 kilohertz separation, or 600 kilometer, 600 kilohertz separation, you take two handies like this, now also you can do that. Okay, this is F1, this is F2. Tell somebody to transmit whatever the signal coming into this thing, once you press the PTT simultaneously, this will go, go on already. So that is where this particular, somehow you have to secure the signal, the weakest signal possible coming inside. So having a filter, having a, as I told you, cavity is the best solution and that should be very, very well tuned. Your uh, spike tuning the pass band should be, be like this. Normally it is not, until unless you have a test equipment, just like that you can't achieve it. So majority will be like this only, it comes in both sides. But we need it. So this is your F1 and this is your wanted frequency. So this will not come out to that way. It should be done that way. But you cannot, if you cannot do also, number one is arranging the antennas in such a way that the DX signal interference onto the RX signal, RX antenna is minimized. 
that is one thing. How you minimize? You put some filter at the RX. You try to cut it as much as possible. It's the one solution. The second solution, you are putting the antennas like this. This radiation will come like this, come like this, and come, come out of this. Way. That's why you maintain distance as much as possible between these two antennas. How much? Some hundreds of lambdas. That is what is the lambda of this one? As per the book I am telling, don't scold me. This is 2 meter. We, we know. And if you go for 70 centimeters, you have a free meter somewhere, it will be somewhere around 435 meters. 70 centimeters is the real area. You should go as much as possible to counter the interference coming from the T, etc. But this is in horizontal, sorry, vertical power. Suppose you keep the antennas like this. This is reduced. Few hundreds of meters is required for this thing, and only few few feet is required for this. Few tens of feet is required for this. You always try to install your antennas in this way. Separation vertically, not horizontally. This first solution is for this thing, making it a signal not to attack. See, it will be like this. Let it go on as much as possible. But a very limited thing usually comes here. This solves your problem to success. Large extent. You know, books also says this thing. There is a vertical separation and a horizontal separation. So vertical separation of antennas is always better. This is for the first uh, you must be a the, the facts what I've been telling, those who have installed repeaters must be already having the experience uh, uh, of this problem. The losing of weak signals when there is a strong signal coming inside into the uh, this thing and then transmitting, uh, retransmitting the signal and all. Must be having this problem because this is a general problem everywhere. So vertical separation is the best thing possible. That is number one. Number two, increasing the gain. <coughs> you think it will increase the gain of the receiver, but at the same time you have the danger behind the thing immediately. So try to operate the TX at low power. What you do, ask your distant long distance stations, those who are operating inside this uh, um, uh, operation circuit, ask the last man or boss, are you able to hear uh, the TX properly? If he says yes, well, you run only the TX in the repeats. He says yes, I am hearing comfortably, no, no problem, then you leave it there. But then after that, don't try to increase the power. Increasing the power will not do anything because suppose you increase it by 10, 10 more 10 watts, 5 watts to 10 watts means 3 dB you have increased the power, double power. So this is traveling all here, 5 minutes it reaches only 0.1 there. What is the point? If it, after going there, if it cannot open the squelch on the other side, there is no meaning for this thing. No meaning of increasing your power. Because of, because of that, what is happening? You are troubling all your local people. That uh, squelch, chup, 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 it keeps coming, keeps drifting in between. So the signal is more, these are the problems. Squelch drops, again it, because there is a COR, the COR guy, what, is, what it does, it kicks the COR always to uh, operate the PTT. If it kicks the PTT to operate, eh, it gets on. Once it gets on, again the interference comes, so it shuts down. So that is why that oscillation takes work, chup, 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 it keeps making the noise, that is the reason. And you can hear the long distance repeaters, these are the weak signals come that way. That is the reason for this one. So don't try to increase the power and as well the transmitting gain of the antenna also. But you might say, sir, how to travel long, long distance? Eh? Of course, there are ways. This, this is the first point that you got. Make vertical separation. The second point, don't <coughs> try to operate the transmitter at the higher power, operate it at the lowest power. Give concentration to the receiver. Always try to see whether the longest distance station is clearly coming into your receiver or not. That is the first step you have to make. Rx is receiving clearly or not. When it is received, then only you can transmit. When it is not received, what is the point of increasing the transmitting power or doing all the nonsense and wrong? Am I right or not? Yes. So the audio should come clean for you out. Then next question is how to secure this clean audio? Carefully transmit, transfer it into the transmitting. Then it is heard by everyone. Then you say, hey, what a wonderful repeater they are having. Otherwise not. So, received signal, secure the audio quality, the same audio quality, carefully. <coughs> then you transfer, transfer it to the receiving microphone, uh, circuit and all. But while, when it comes outside, this is the thing, don't increase the power. Now coming, receiving also, you always try to keep the receiving antenna on top. Because it has to receive from the longer distance. So on the vertical separation, you keep the transmitting antenna down and keep the receiver antenna on top. It receives the signal. 
then we see how you retransmit as a secondary method. But first of all, try to give a priority to receive the signal. Clean signal as much as possible. Security signals back to the transmitter. <coughs> this is one thing. So here, you increase here. But naturally, your problem, whatever is the 0 dB uh, signal radiation, leaks, slight leakages also will come there and then you the thing. You will find the difference between a 0 dB receiving antenna and a 3 dB receiving antenna or a 6 dB receiving antenna. Definitely you will find the difference. What? If the transmitter is not operated, that will be receiving better signal and you will be very happy. The moment the transmitter is on, that goes, that you feel that 0 dB antenna is much better than a 3 dB antenna. <coughs> Police people did not listen to me. This happened in somewhere around 2004 and 5. They said they, they have taken the antenna from me the next day or third day because the additional director of police communication, who is in charge of the uh, before bifurcation of state, is my personal friend, Mr. Vaivi Sopara. He said, our logo, Murdu logo, I was, they don't listen to you. They will do it in the police way. I thought, Baba, they will do it, maybe applying their police tricks on me also. If I don't listen to them, that's what you do it. And then came home. Later they said, sir, they are not working. What, I, what they are not working? They say, antennas are not working. Suppose you switch off uh, this thing and then tell me, this is all, they are wonderful. Are you, you are telling me wonderful, they are not working. What do you think? Then this is the reason. So that's what I'm telling you. At every step, you should be very, very careful. Whatever the audio is received should be carefully transferred to the transmitter. See, next step, uh, these two points you got noted. Yeah, now I'm coming to the Vizag uh, example, Vishakapatnam example or any coastal area or any, any area where you are residing where you want to have a bad transmitting even coverage area pattern that's why I am telling Vishak but only we will take an example easy anyone have any other better example also you can tell me because this indicator is on the seashore here just on the seashore only just below the Kailas Giri hill you have the seashore so here you are using here Omnidirectional antenna, all is very easy for you, for everyone. You put some only two ground plane antennas. The job is on, then the weapon is cut, and then the celebrations have been made, and evening parties, everything has been made. But hopefully, the repair is functional. But what about the signal going here? There is no one to use this signal. Is it not a loss? And then, you should have an antenna which will provide you coverage only for this area. Then you have to make that antenna. Of course, it is not a big thing. Any antenna is a radiating helmet, transmit the signal in all directions. Suppose, a light only, see that light is there. There is a bulb. It is signal radiating in all directions. Okay. Suppose I keep one mirror here. Now what is the signal position? 180 degrees. This half of the signal is coming out of this direction. That is gain nothing but 3 dB gain. This is the 3 dB gain. That means half of the signal going unnecessarily and the back side is coming to the front. So the signal is coming. So the concentration onto the one side has gone up. So this is the antenna you have to make. Nothing. See. This is nothing but some sort of a dipole. This antenna. And you have this radius. Your radiating element RF drive is connected to this and ground is connected to this. Here also you have an antenna. This is the same thing. This is hot end and this is the ground end. This is a dipole antenna. It is having some sort of a thing like this. Here, for the same thing, this element, eh, you keep one reflector behind. Only two elements. You see what a difference it makes. The best, do you feel, hey, what is happening? All of a sudden, all these direction stations get maximum signal possible and they will be very happy. I am hearing and I am transmitting also. All you have to do, what is the cost of this antenna? Only two elements, aluminum uh, pipes and then one. Some non conducting thing, and then your 50 ohms coaxial cable with a matching network, and everything is perfect for one to one year to be where uh, your, uh, your operating frequency may be 145 or 145, 600 or 700 or whatever it is. According to your requirement. The signal coming back side, also pumped forward, automatically you get a better signal there. 
here in this case, this Vishakapatnam case, why I am referring that it will be easy for everyone, I have given the reference. We have the antenna here, I mean, sorry, repeater here. You put the antennas in such a way, all the signal will come in this direction. Naturally, no signal will go onto the sea. So like that, that, you will have to make a radiation pattern other than the, suppose you are in the center of the city, this pattern is perfect then. You are selecting for some high rise building or Vijayawada. You are selecting a high rise building or a hillat. It is on the middle of the city, part of the city. And then you have established it here. And you are having a wonderful college here. It is good. But this is a different case. See, kindly don't think otherwise. If you have any doubt there, and then it's a few point out. I will, I will answer you that. I am simply following the data. Sometimes you might, must be losing uh, some doubts in mind. It is current version. Okay. See here, so this is the way you will change the radiation pattern into one direction. See, earlier it was like this. Means your signal is traveling up to this place only. Or getting reception etc. from this place only. Now, it will not go on this side. It is an elongated pattern. Now see, your signal is going up to this, this place. This is one advantage. See, straight away going for a GP antenna is not just the solution. There are so many ways. Of course, for the beginners or the people who are having a reasonable knowledge or not having a big knowledge on that, it is very easy. Art for the beginning, instead of 100% expected area to cover, you may be covering some 50% coverage of area and you will be happy at least for some time. After gaining experience, you go on improving this thing till you reach 100%. Changing the antenna on Sunday, two, three people gather and then go to <laughs> some stations will be ready to give the reports from the farther distant stations. Ah, everyone is ready, ready. Then you change this antenna. This is the GP antenna, and this is the this type of uh, uh, pointing antenna. Which one you are getting better, etc., etc. Will be there. But you will have to do this exercise. It comes over some period. And then, suppose uh, you have an average like this. After going for this this type of two element antenna. If you go for further elements, uh, yes, it will further increase, but this will become narrow. Then these people start complaining, others are, we are not hearing. You can hear, but you cannot transmit. If you transmit, the repeater will not catch. This is one area. These are the two circuits. See, this is the common area where you receive and transmit. You are comfortable. This is not only as per the book, but as per the practical experience also. See, this is the common area, okay? This is only receive area. You will hear the repeater and you can never reach the repeater. That is also there. This is only transmit area. You can, uh, uh, this transmits, you can hear, but the receiver, the repeater cannot hear it. So there are one, two, three zones are there. So you don't want, a, okay, common factor for any repeater, some, Say 90% common area, 5% only RX, 5% only TX, may be okay. But 50-50, uh, it is not acceptable. So that's why this antenna spread radiation pattern or the coverage pattern important. Uh, for that thing, minimum, other than the ground plane antenna, suppose where you want to have your signal, if, if you want to have your signal in an omnidirectional center, on the center building, or center of the building, in the uh, center of the town, and all, it's okay. But this you have to, you have to individually decide what is the coverage area you need, what what is the best thing, and all. And uh, suppose, as a Vishakhapatnam example, I told you, you want this side, and some people say we are missing here. There is a possibility you keep one hand, one antenna like this, and one antenna like this. Then you will have a pattern. Something like much further signals will reach to these corners. So of course, you will have to make match the two antennas. It's not a big thing. Make a half lambda partial cable balloon and all matching both of the antennas. And then 50 50, they will come into 100 uh, ohms impedance. Again, you have to uh, bring it back to your 1 is 2 transformer or something like that. Bring it back to 50 ohms. But your antennas perform like this, and you get the receiving also like. Uh, like a chamber work because of the location there where you are standing your repeater, 
without any interference, without any obstructions or not. So this is of course, this pointing making a perfect uh, radiation pattern uh, as per your choice is a <coughs> somewhat a difficult subject, but it is not easy, that hard to achieve also. But this is a, this is your ground plane antenna, this is the coverage. If you are having this type of uh, antennas, you can give a better pattern traveling to the farther distances. But at the same time, this needs some attention, some knowledge and all uh, to make these antennas or to make them to stand there in the position. But as I told you, those who are installing the repeaters or those who are operating the repeaters can check with some efficiency it is running and then go on improving. It is a regular, uh, don't expect the one shot first time itself. Uh, I know we took POP or Pratap and all, they were installing the repeaters in Nandi Hill somewhere in 1985, 1980s and all. Took some months and years for them to settle there. How many times they went on to the hills? Stayed there nights without any food and all. They went on, went on and then put a, uh, this thing here, yeah, duplexer things and all. Before putting the duplexer, it was something, after putting the duplexer, it was something else. <laughs> People were giving them curses from the Bangalore city saying, oh, what nonsense you are doing there? You are having our booze and not doing the work properly there. What is happening there? This is what I am doing with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> See, these are the reasons. And uh, sometimes the signal is lost. Eh? You can't even understand why it is lost. Eh? Before the things are, they, they say that 0 dB is what is fantastic. 3 dB they expect much more fantastic. But this is gone. They say, then they start criticizing the antenna supply. Or they start criticizing, you don't know how to, you know, you don't know how to install the antenna properly. Eh? These are all the factors there. But minimum thing as I am telling you, number one, if you come to the repeaters, RDO, CVR is not acceptable because you lose weak signals very high. <coughs> number two, vertical separation of antennas. As I told you, the radiation pattern distance will be much, much less when compared to the horizontal pattern. Number three, never increase. Don't go for QR, always QRP only. Never increase power of TX. Transmitting power increase, what can I say? Both the color, it will give you like any, trouble you like anything. Number four, think of possible filtering at the receiver front end. Filtering at RX front end. <coughs> These things are there. It's a good repeater. Of course, quality of the cables, as less distance as possible between the transmitter and receivers. Go for good quality cables only. See, they are a one time investment. Suppose you take techno cables. They have become costly because of the copper grade and all it's that what the copper price today. Some of the copper cables have come with silver uh, lined cables also. They are extremely costly but they are really uh, they perform like anything. They perform like a champ. Suppose your PL2 fine and connector is here. I think I have written uh, characters somehow. And your cable is entering here. It is to be safeguarded properly here for the rainwater etc. to seep inside the cable. That has not been done properly once the water starts going, the rainy seasons like this year and last year, continuously rain, five months continuous raining. Water starts here and then finally, finally it comes into your shack also to say hello to you. Gone, your cable gone forever. Forget about that because of the complete the rust and corrosion comes inside the braid. Forget about the cable, you throw it out because this is the cable. Outer sheet, they are the shield inside, and your uh, inner thing, and in your uh, hot uh, wire, etc. The capacitance formed everywhere, everywhere the capacitance formed there. You leak out your signals like anything, and then finally you won't reach anything there on the top. You, can, you have to check the velocity factor of the cable, you have to check the loss of the cable, etc. etc. Once or all, you use the kapadiwala, throw it out for the, some pass, 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 p
That's where, and but LMR cables and all are coming in with the aluminum sheet and all. They are maybe losses figures and all. On paper, they look very good. But doesn't last for more than two, three years because of by the lifting with your hand itself, you can understand the weight of the cable. And you will understand, it sounds very cheap. Uh, okay, we will go for that thing. But they don't last long. Because the outer plate is made of aluminum, aluminum don't make a proper contact here. They have to be crimped properly. Crimped even after crimping, all these will not last for many years. But there is a difference between a copper shielding and an aluminum thing. Copper will give you shorter here. And put a heat sheet tube on that and then do the thing. You will never allow the water to go inside. And these small, small tricks, so like applying the copper tape, etc., will prevent your, all possible damages to the equipment, these things also. Next comes because of the higher elevation, you will have the problem of your lightening. The problem of lightening is always there. Because it is <laughs> recently, uh, of course, the experience of KDD people also Vijayawada. Yes. That this uh, LHR repeater antenna gone totally to black ash. This is a tota tota one. Got into pieces. That's a uh, 6 dB uh, double goal in here. Gone totally gone. So there I have to check the repeater again and found on. Fortunately, the DK 720 750 is working fantastic. Uh, we checked in our workshop. Again, I returned and reinstalled this antenna. Because the moment you see go on top, you see everyone there. Natural lighting will find it uh, the first uh, target to hit on that. So you should have some lightening arresters and hear also as close as possible to the antenna and then ground it. They will, all, they will not, mostly they will not pose any loss for the signals. Very little uh, signal loss will be there, but the insertion loss and all, but it, that is negligible, not to worry much at 145 or 435 because they go up to, to 3 gigahertz also. So there it may be a problem losing the signal and all, but suddenly not at this 145 VHF band and then uh, 435 UHF band. For the amateur frequencies, uh, they don't make uh, much problem because we have installed them hundreds of them. Uh, Many times I found the safeguard the equipment like anything. They are gone. <laughs> they are sacrificed in themselves and they saved the uh, radios. So this is one thing. And then grounding it as much as possible. Then you might find it is difficult. I also know on the hillocks you have a lot of stones and then uh, rocky soil. It will be difficult. But then you will have to arrange more uh, number of grounds as much as possible. Connect all of them together. So more number of resistors in parallel. Uh, will come down as less as it should be somewhere around 0.5 ohms or less than 1 ohm. That, that, that makes sense. And you see, you should see that the moisture is there. Or, uh, suppose you are operating and maintaining your repeater as a prestigious repeater, these things are very important. Not just equipment, not just antennas, not just cables. <coughs> Chemical groundings are also important for the safeguarding of your repeaters. If they are done, they go like anything, charm for the years together. You don't even have to go there. Proper setting of the voltages, uh, the batteries, charging voltages, and the discharging uh, thresholds, the antennas grounded properly, fixed mechanically, fixed properly, cables or cable connectors are secured properly. You don't have to go there. But police department and other departments, as their duty, they keep an operator there always, or uh, some secure kind of things about it. Amateurs, we are doing for our hobby and we have our regular morning duty at works and all. We have our own problems and uh, things and all. It will not be possible for to go every day and then sit there and then see what is happening. So these type of uh, precautions taken will prevent uh, and give you best performance for, from the repeat says for many years to go. Next thing I mean is the search from the voltages. There also you, are, uh, you have a 220 volts because Static discharge, it need not be a lightning. <coughs> Suppose the month of March, April, May, you have a lot of static discharge in the air. So that keeps coming onto the power lines always. So they keep such, see, this, this is the 60 cycles, 220 volts AC. But all of a sudden, you see this one. Sensitive radio communication equipment, this is sufficient to double that. So counter this thing, some filters on the 220 volt side, and some filters in the uh, DC side. And taking care, all of them must be grounded. <coughs> Just uh, you have a repeater here, you have a repeater. This is your room, and you have a 
grounding, etc., outside the room, putting one nice eyes upon wire will not be sufficient. Because it has to discharge at the earliest possible, fastest way possible, whatever the discharge is coming out of the area, this thing right now is my car. Builds up a voltage of some kilowatts together. That has to be discharged at the earliest possible within seconds, milliseconds or nanoseconds. That is enough for this equipment to get damaged. Yeah. That is why you need some sort of a copper strips or uh, more number. Suppose if it is not available, you put more number of wires in parallel. That makes the resistance less. These are all the things, and these are all practical tips only. Then, uh, what are the problems you are facing other than these things? Radiation pattern, as I addressed the weak signal uh, capturing. Captured weak signal to be secured, how that I have covered. Then, how uh, it should not be disturbed by the TX overpowering, so don't increase the power and don't decrease the gain of, increase the gain of the antennas, but it should be under control and you should not see. You can do a practical test here, whether it is properly done or not. This is more important. Listen carefully to this particular section. And you have your RX and you have the antenna. What happened with the antenna? You have your TX. Okay? And this audio is coming into this thing and you have the TX. And you have the switch here. You must be tried it out or at least learn how to try it here. You are having a loudspeaker and there is one distant signal coming from so your friend, the biggest signal possible. You are hearing the audio into this thing. Then you switch on the PTT. PTT is your line, then you switch on. That means till then your transmitter will not go into transmit. You will be receiving OK. Once it goes into this thing, if the signal is lost by another walkie talkie, yes, you are gone. That means you have to check your uh, isolation is not proper. You have to try that weakest signal, whatever is coming here, should repeat care properly and coming up to your other walking talk. Until unless it comes there, uh, this is not a perfect system. That you have to take care of. I cannot say that it will come overnight. I certainly understand it is a very difficult thing. But try to do it over a period of version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. You will be achieving it after some time. These are all the points what uh, you will be encountering in your repeater installations and repeater maintenances. So this is it. Once the switch is closed, uh, this RX also will have the problem. And uh, next year, this audio also will be having the problem. So once you close the switch, your RX goes into trouble means you don't have to think second day. You have to check the system the filter here and if you don't keep a filter try keeping a filter or already filter has kept your filter was kept you increase the height difference between the antennas or decrease the gain or first do one thing reduce the tx power these are all the practical things you have tell me sir suppose uh, multiple signals are received at a time weaker strong signals which will be transmitted first we transmit a strong signal only naturally whatever is coming to this thing some fellow standing here, sir, with a walkie talkie. I am standing a poor man somewhere here. This signal also comes as a small signal. This comes like a big signal. Which one may go? Whoever of the shoulder power, the fellow will push him and go inside. Here also the same thing. Yes, sir. So, some opinion on how we should have our antenna in Mumbai for the entire team in Mumbai is on for a Hey, Somebody earlier also contacted me from Mumbai, sir. Uh, what's the problem? I mean, I can hardly receive anything. And there's no repeater anymore, nothing. So I was just, since you're taking on the subject, I wanted some input in terms of, you mentioned about how the antenna design should happen, right? So that we can raise power. Oh, we so can take Area of coverage you are talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which area you want to cover? How should we? Ah, that's what I'm telling. Should I draw the map of Bombay? It's okay. I understand. I understand what you're asking. What is your area of coverage you require that you decide? So because it is the Mumbai heart of the city, then your omnidirectional thing is the solution. What do you want? No, but Bombay is a strip, right? Okay, something like that. Uh. On either side there is sea. Yes. This is an island actually. Something like a partial island, okay. So if I could just if you allow me to uh, then 
Where are you, are you installing it here or here or here? Yeah, no, so there was one which was near the sea and there was one which was in the north Bombay but that is also close to the sea. Okay, close to the sea and all is okay but this is your coverage area one day. But they are not uh, any use. They are not using because of uh, the services. Right? Not services but from a rece reception point of view. Also. No, no, this is what I am asking. Is Bombay city like this only? No, not exactly. This is the sea and this is the sea? Not, not exactly. Okay. So if I may, if you may allow me to draw. Yes, yes, please sir. Sir, all of you listen, I have given the example of Vishakapatna and Vijayawada, but this is the solution as a situation in Bombay. So, Bombay is like this. Okay. And you have another bay here. This is the Kolaba thing that happens. Right, so this is the upper part of Maharashtra. This is Bombay. And this is all this Thane district. No, no, no. You see, you consider the Bombay first. Uh, this is Bombay. That's what I'm telling you. You are having an elongated listing uh, only, na? Yes. Uh, no, but people over here also are a part of Mumbai. Right? I accept that. Where you want to install your repeater? You tell me where should it be. Right now there is one which is okay, somewhere over here. I don't, I don't no, no. So I'm just saying. So right now there is one somewhere okay. over here. Okay. And there is one somewhere over here. Okay. But it's not thing? working. Oh, repeater. From a reach perspective, it is it is not Mathera, efficient. Mathera is suitable. Uh, but Mathera, we had a repeater in Mathera, which is a hill station, almost 300 meters. Yeah, we will come meters. to those things. We can but have contacts all over. You can be in touch with us. See, here, I can suggest you one antenna going in this direction. And it is collapsed last in the. Let us complete this thing. Let us complete this thing. You can have an antenna in this direction, you can have an antenna in this direction. So it comes as an lead shape. So yeah, uh, the thing is covered there. Sir, but the people who are in the other side. Okay, okay. Side. That, that we will see. It is not a big thing. See, this is 180 degrees coverage, sir. 180 degrees coverage means it will come like this. They will come into the vicinity. It is not a big thing. Yes, sir. Sir, my problem is not the VHF, VHF. It is a nature. I have a high tension wire uh, crossing in. Uh, Sir, this is not the subject. That has to be addressed separately. Because we are already running short of time and then uh, time will be addressed. Yes, please. Sir, what is the ideal uh, uh, separation for the vertical separation of the antennas? What is the ideal length? Ideal? Ideal length. Separation. Separation length. That is what. That depends on these antennas. What antenna you are using? What is the power you are using? If you are increasing the power, you have to increase the difference. If you are increasing the gain of the antenna, you have to increase the gain difference. If you are decreasing the antenna power, then you can make them closer. That is no ideal thing. What is the power you are using? What is the gain of the transmitter you are using? That depends on that. It is a practical thing only. You make difference and you see the thing. Yes, sir. Pardon? The WBC, what it is giving, I know. I have no idea, sir. See, technically they, they can be made. It is not a big thing. Cross band repeaters and all that. Have you ever, uh, I'll ask for Farhan, no? any idea? There is Farhan, Farhan. Anyone having any experience of the knowledge regarding the cross band uh, repeaters, uh, allocations or rules from WBC? That, that's worth looking after, sir. That's worth looking after. See, there are two repeaters, you say. You have another VHF link, UHF link, another UHF link, a simple X link. They are interconnected with each other. So this, this is a VHF repeater. This is a VHF repeater. If they are interconnected, they can be have, having a communication through this link also. So this entire network becomes as a single network. That is also possible. But there are many ways now, other than uh, uh, these things, and because internet is available and audio interfaces are available through internet, or echo link sort of things are available in internet. So this interlinking, these two audios have to be interlinked. That can be done. Yes. Single UHF simplex link. That can be done, sir. Not a problem. Because this RX is triggering the TX repeat. At the same time, here also, it, it, this was done in. Tirumala Durbati Devasthanam in 2001 by me. Earlier they were not having communication directly from the temple complex to the Durbati. Why? Because Durbati hills are like this. 
and Tirupati town is here. Tirupati Balaji town is here. You have direct uh, the shadow of this thing onto the Tirupati town. Only 25 watt sex were coming, only mobiles. But the TTT security, vigilance security, I have done this thing. Of course, we have done the thing and maintained for 10 years as a uh, 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 gift to the Lord Balaji. So we were maintaining till uh, 2008 and the 9, 2008. Till then, uh, by the time the cell phones have come up, so they slowly came back from VHF radios. There, the temple complex again is inside this thing. Balaji temple complex is here. Here, this Narayanagiri hill is there, then we have kept one VHF repeater, which is a regular repeater for them. And on Tirupati, you have their administrative, TTD administrative building is there. There we have put up one tower and put one more repeater there. I interlinked both of these things with the UHF. Then they had communication directly from Temple Complex. First time in their history they had communication from Temple Complex to Tirupati town comfortably where they are standing. This is possible, technically possible, not a big issue, but at the time, <laughs> our president Sankar Dayal Zarma visited Tirupati. He was very regularly coming to Tirupati. So they put up a small request in front of him. He passed down a word to WBC people and all. I think this was done. But this was done. They have given the UHF frequencies also there. So. And presently, for the amateur service, I don't have uh, much knowledge on that. You know, that especially WBC rules and all. But you have to think of that. And technically, it is possible, sir. Not a big issue at all. Next coming, uh, this one particular thing, uh, those who are making repeaters through the uh, GM300, not GM300 sets, and any set, this particular thing you listen. This is a very important thing also. Of course, not a priority matter. See, this is an RX is there. This is a TX is there. People, you must be going through the data sheets of uh, this equipment or any VHF uh, receiver and VHF transmitter. See, there is a filter 300 cycles to 3000 cycles. That is 300 to 3 kc filters are there inside to filter all out uh, musical things and other things and all only for the human speech because these things are being used only for the communication purpose, not for our entertainment purpose. Entertainment purpose is something like your FM radio or so. But this is only for communication purpose, so there is a filter inside. And every VHF, even all the walkie talkies, what you are having also, will be having this thing. This is quite common phenomenon. For receiver output also it is there and for the TX input also it is there. So, what is happening? You have a walkie talkie here, you have another walkie talkie. Did you ever try talking from walkie talkie to walkie talkie and talking through the repeater? You find any, notice any difference there in the audio quality? Sharpness. Huh? Sharpness, voice, voice got suppressed because here transmitting there is a filter, this receiver got a filter, again the TX has got a filter. And then coming out, your receiver has got a filter. So many filters like going in it, and finally it comes. Your VHF, UHF linking also will be the same problem, sir. If you add number of things, sir, it finally it becomes like as if you are speaking through a tunnel. But it is not a big thing. There are filters, there are jumpers in GM300, GP300 radios to pull out just three pin headers from this place to you put this place. Your filter is out. So your audio quality will come as now. You use any number of radios, no issue at all. Very simple thing. So while programming, programming is done from externally from the computer in Lagadia, you have just connected the, uh, this thing, radios together and then your repeater is on. But you have to do some hard work. Hard work working for this particular purpose. You remove the jumpers, both sides. This radio and this radio, remove the jumpers and make them straight. So audio goes in and comes out without any filter. That is closing. Ah, okay. I like it. Almost complete. So after so this, this session, we will be moving to main hall. After this session, I am going to close down this session. So I am requesting anyone having the doubts or any doubts or any clarifications needed, kindly post your questions in large groups. I will be answering or someone will be answering. It's not a big deal. Hope you have got all the practical tips from this uh, presentation, not just a theory. Then, uh, this, is, this is the uh, thing I told you as if it is sounding through a tunnel. So that if you want that thing should not happen, you simply remove all the filter jumpers. This is very easy in GM300, GP300, sorry, GM338, etc. I think GM338 is a software program. But GM300, you have the pinhead jumpers. 
but then audio quality will be very lovely, something like regularly as if you are talking between the two walkie-talkie soon. This is one point. I think I have covered for the repeater operations and maintenance as much as possible. Still, uh, you are most welcome. Don't have any doubts or hesitations and inhibitions. Kindly call us at any time. So, you just post so that others will also understand what you are asking. Don't call me privately for that or don't ask me private suggestion. Because we always suggest it and then encourage everyone to post it publicly so that others will understand what is going on there, what is the subject, what are the replies we have given. This thing, that's all. Pin configuration of the GM3 card. Simply say GM3 create pin card. If you go to Google, it will give you one minute. Diagram on the back side, connectors. Everything cut out the back. It's no big thing. Actually, I'm done with this. Pin configuration. Don't touch it. 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 So thanks. That's all, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you.